Hi everybody, Housing here, and welcome to a brand new sort of video. Uh, well, I kind of demoed this in Grammarcy before, but this is an asset creation video for a whole new train. This would be the uh, locomotive for the Southern, oh, sorry, not Southern Pacific, the Coast Range GS4, uh, but obviously it's the Southern Pacific Daylight GS4 locomotive. Uh, so you've already seen me importing my reference photos, well, reference drawings, which are really nice orthographic drawings I found online. Uh, and I pulled in, my first piece was the boiler, being the largest piece of the steam engine. Uh, and now I am doing the cab. So uh, when I did the Hudson, I, the uh, Dreyfus Hudson that you can see in an episode of Grammar Scene will hopefully actually be released to the public soon. Um, I learned a lot about kind of how, what a good technique for steam locomotive making was. So this takes a lot from that. So it actually ended up being far, far faster than, uh, than creating that Hudson. But um, as we continue, I'm now bringing up kind of the side skirting, the streamlining a little bit, uh, and adjusting the curve in the front. Uh, right now, so I'm, I understand the four views are probably a little bit confusing. I'm mostly at the moment using the, uh, the right top and the right bottom to be able to trace out onto the side imagery. So uh, if you ever see it, like I'm pulling out to very specific but random lengths, it's probably because I'm looking at a different view. Uh, so right there you saw a quick and easy technique where I just modeled half of the skirting of everything and then duplicated it. Uh, I'm now doing this again for the skyline casing on top of the boiler. I added a little bit extra boiler shaping in there because I noticed I was missing it. But um, in my other monitor you can actually probably see uh, I have, uh, you can see a chrome tab down there, that's uh, looking at other reference images. So there will be times where things just kind of stop and you'll get uh, you'll get, uh, that's me looking at, at different reference images, trying to find other angles and trying to see if there's any details that these uh, orthographics might not be showing, because uh, a front view and a side view don't actually tell you the whole story. So right now, uh, I'm working on the top of the skyline casing around the smokestack, which is an interestingly shaped sort of thing. It takes me a couple tries to really figure out what I want from it, and that's kind of a weird description. I think this is the final design. But I'm trying to figure out what details I should actually capture and what thicknesses and what shapes and should I just like screw it all and make it just flat or really kind of go the extra mile. And I think it was here when I decided that this whole train we're going to go the extra mile on uh, in terms of model detail and in terms of texturing detail as well, uh, which you'll see later. But uh, it ended up being a little bit of a pain. Now I'm sinking in an area for whistles and things. Uh, now this is uh, the front of the smoke box, the, uh, the cover on the front, the silver part if you are familiar with the real locomotive. And it's so distinctively shaped, I knew I needed to, uh, to capture it in a pretty high poly way. So that smoke box door alone is actually more triangles than some of my entire freight cars, which felt a little crazy to do at first, but ended up uh, really being worth it, I think, just because it's such an iconic part and an iconic shape of this train. Uh, so moving on, I'm now uh, importing my Hudson and starting to scrap a lot of the, well, peel out a lot of the de details. Because one thing I really like, uh, and one thing that I think is really nice about uh, what I, how I model things, is I take a lot of pieces from older models, um, and I think that, one, that saves me a ton of time, which is really handy. And two, it actually also, in my mind at least, helps that things look more uniform. So the piston heads, since they're actually pieces of the same model originally, are the same number of divisions around uh, instead of a, being a proper circle. But uh, so, the, like, the wheels are similarly shaped and sized, and the uh, kind of... It's, it's a huge shortcut, which is really handy, so I save a lot of time doing this. But it's... For me, it kind of helps things work a little bit better. You just saw me now um, bringing in a blank cube. I'm really shaping out this bottom area and this internal area. That's going to basically stay blank black shape uh, doing the smokestack now, which is an interesting teardrop. So I'm using a soft select so I can pull out a teardrop very easily. Uh, but I put in the firebox and now I'm grabbing the uh, drive rods from the Hudson and extruding a new length uh, because of course the Hudson and the, uh, the GS4 have different uh, numbers of wheels. So I'm now uh, starting on the running gear which is a really weird kind of task for me I guess because it's it's not animated in game, which is really disappointing, but I was trying to figure out, like, can I do it with a texture, can I do it with something else? Ended up just saying, screw it, we're just going to do it um, as normal, and it's just going to be static. 
Because this is my first train that I really designed from the ground up to run. Like, I think I'm going to make the Hudson be able to run soon, but this one I was really focusing on. Uh, so at the front of the GS4, I was looking and trying to figure out, like, what goes in this big blank area on the front? And it's actually a little platform here. I'm trying to figure out now, kind of, I think it pauses because I'm looking for better reference images. Uh, but I'm trying to get the shaping right and trying to figure out the best way to show this front area because it is definitely kind of a dark void on a lot of these uh, on a lot of the pictures but um, I decided just to go for a big box and that actually stays I'm not 100% happy with the texture detail I added onto it later which is just very little detail but um, I go in now and actually add in steps in the in the side skirting and I'm going and adding the handrails and some pipes on the outside of the boiler. And these sorts of details are what made this my highest poly count thing ever. My highest poly count model for City Skylines. But maybe really think it's kind of worth it. Because once I got into the details that I felt like I needed, like the running gear, this is a lot less streamlined of a locomotive, I guess, than the, uh, than the Dreyfus Hudson that I did before. Which means I feel like a lot of the actual kind of textural details that that um, that the locomotive has are something that I really felt like I needed to capture. So the stairs inside this uh, side skirting was a really important part of that. And once I finally get it in the game, that's actually one of my favorite parts. And just like the whole profile of this thing from the front. And of course, with the texture on it, it looks phenomenal as well. Uh, so now you just saw me kind of finishing up the running gear and I'm working on the number boards. I, whenever I research these, uh, these are the marker lights. Whenever I make an asset, I learn so much about the actual prototype. So it took me a long time figuring out, like, do I want to put the number boards in the front like they were originally built or back like they were later converted to? Uh, I put mine back uh, kind of in the middle there. So it's kind of a late actual steam era representation. Uh, but this is actually based off of the Southern Pacific 4449, which is still operating. I moved on to the tender, by the way, if you haven't noticed. The whole locomotive disappeared. Uh, I just hit it in the editor here. Um, but yeah, it's back now. But um, that locomotive is still around, so right now, uh, I think today, as this video comes out, I'm releasing this locomotive in its as-delivered consist, so it's like a 1940s, 1950s sort of deal. Uh, and then, because there's a locomotive out there in real life, I've actually also modeled, I think that's actually part of this video, uh, an additional water tender, and I'm hoping to be able to get a very cool kind of excursion consist out, which will be this followed up by a P42, followed up by kind of a, a real mix of old fashioned and modern cars, just to, just so people who are making modern cities can see this thing. But uh, also so people are making older cities or so people who want to have like this luxury passenger train in its full glory can have that as well. I, I did up the full set of cars just because I think that, uh, I mean, there's a reason why this in real life, the daylight, which this is based off of, uh, was called the most beautiful train in the world uh, with its very distinctive colors and everything and very kind of nice shape. So anyway, the tender's pretty straightforward. Um, I go for a little thing I've never really done before, which is um, actually modeling out ladders and handrails and things. I usually just use blank textures on this and if I did this again, I'd probably just use a texture again. It didn't quite feel worth it, but at this point, especially because the locomotive was high poly, I'm like, screw it. If it's like, we're just making everything high poly here. So um, I'm going through and trying to reduce the poly count on the ladders as much as I can. I think each one of these is only about 100 tries, uh, maybe a little bit more. But I'm now shaping it and kind of bend it into the right position to be able to flow over the top of the tender like this, the top of this uh, oil tank actually, which is interesting, something I didn't know about these uh, trains in real life. But I'm um, going and shaping it, lining everything up, and I bring it back, and of course, nice, the perfect fit. So uh, then I realized I actually I need a draw bar, so I start doing that, and uh, checking to make sure I'm recording the footage here. But uh, I continue now, and now I believe I start, yeah, deleting stuff, and this might seem a little crazy. But um, I do my texturing in a very kind of efficient way, a reasonably efficient way. So when I delete stuff and remake it, then it shares the same UV maps, which is this extra screen you're seeing here. So this is me kind of laying out what pieces of the model are going to go where on the texture sheet. 
So you can see as I select different faces, I can project from the top or the side or a cylindrical sort of thing to uh, shape this, I'm just removing the old Hudson texture there. Uh, so I'm chopping up stuff to try to get different shapes and features. I realized that I was missing a sort of walkway, like a little step rail uh, by the side of the cab, which was a very distinctive uh, like black color uh, on the top part, but orange on the side. So I figured I'd be missing that. Uh, and then weirdly, I realized that my whole locomotive was too narrow, which is not great. So I'm going through and trying to figure out what the best kind of way to fix this all would be. And now I am back on the UV mapping grind. A lot of people think that UV mapping is the worst part of modeling and like, I don't know, I like it sometimes, but uh, I definitely have to be in like a let's UV map mood for this, which is diff way different usually than the modeling mood. So um, recording this actually really helped, it made me just like, well, I can't stop now. I got to keep recording this. I'm making a video out of it. So let's, let's press on, let's keep going and I guess we'll have to do the boring stuff too. So anyway, you can see me here uh, doing the headlights and this, I'm like doubling over the texture, trying to be more efficient there. Uh, that this was very easy, just top and side. Now you can see like some of the parts that really get a lot of messing with just end up and the projections that are given, like automatically assigned are just terrible. So there's a lot of that um, going through now and checking my whole layout grabbing grabbing each piece yeah i do the um trying to figure out what to keep from this so all the running gear i just uh mapped once from the side and then arranged into like a tight little block like that which was uh, pretty handy some other stuff uh the the piston here since i changed the shape of the front of it i decided it was probably worth it to change the um change the profile texture just in case i wanted to do something there um and kind of continued with this so one thing I did this time is uh, I'm actually preparing these textures for an ambient occlusion bake. So I'm laying them out and trying to map them in a way and combine only specific ones that are going to let me paint uh, appropriate shadows onto it. Oh, this is an interesting part too. So um, these checkers are a texture, like a temporary texture I applied. Oh, wow. I guess that's it. So we color block. But anyway, uh, so those textures are just to make sure that all the shells are the same size, which means that all the pixels from the texture will all be the same size. Uh, anyway, um, I do a quick color blocking. That part I intentionally didn't record just because it's really boring. It's just me like in one monitor Googling for reference colors and just trying to make sure that lines line up. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to get like some nice pinstriping working. Uh, I think I end up like really getting in there. And this, it felt weird because it was very early, but I felt like the uh, I usually do kind of bigger stuff and then move smaller and smaller and smaller and like painting single pixels at this stage of the texture felt wrong. But um, I felt like it was kind of important to be able to get the, the level of detail I'd be doing because I needed to find out how, how would I fit these, um, how would I fit these pinstripes, how to figure everything out. So as I continue, I'm now experimenting with the um, aluminum striping along the front. Realize I've built it too short, too thin, and too short. So doing the same thing again and got to like line it up. And I think right in here, yeah, I realized that uh, I need to reproject the, the shell to get it to line up better because I scaled it a little bit wrong. Uh, and now applying some layer styles, which are what I use to uh, get a little bit of extra detail in there. So while the actual silver piece, like a real silver piece, would just be a constant color, um, I go and add a, an inner glow with Photoshop to give it a little bit of a shine. Uh, and I add a drop shadow because it's raised up. So there I'm actually going and grabbing the window color from an older texture, uh, which is actually hilariously from a model that's like partly completed, but waiting on a bunch of other models to get completed. So this is uh, this one that has a window color based off of a different model comes out before the one it's based off of, which I guess is funny, maybe? I don't know. It shows that I need to get my priorities straight and not get distracted by a whole new project. But uh, anyway, I've imported my same reference image now and I'm using it to uh, trace on some details. Uh, these boiler bands, I've started doing these, this sort of thing a lot where I will uh, just start painting on a whole ton of different detail uh, in overlay mode. So just depending on how light or dark the texture is, it becomes lighter or darker on what it's above. Uh, and that actually I started last year with the airplanes because when I painted on like panel lines and things I'm like I want these to be able to work on every livery I do. So it makes these really nice, it makes them fairly straightforward to retexture because instead of painting over like raised detail with 
lighter oranges because it's supposed to be like orange that's raised up and catching more light or something like that. Uh, instead, it's just painted over the special gray and it, um, it has a blending, or it's painted over the normal colored gray, but it has a blending mode attached that lets it automatically change whatever color is beneath. So if I wanted to do a black version of this locomotive, uh, those spots would be a dark gray rather than black. Or if I wanted to do the red, white, and blue, uh, this train operated in red, white, and blue for a little while, I'd do that and it would be like a slightly brighter red or like a pink and a light blue. Uh, anyway, I'm continuing on now and doing the same thing with panel lines. Those are also based off the overlay uh, texture mode, but they've got uh, inner shadows and outer glows rather than uh, inner glows and drop shadows. Uh, I'm now taking my silver and doing these number boards, uh, which I think have a really cool kind of arch style at the back there. You'll still be turning off the black a lot uh, because it's just a little easier to see some of the detail work that I'm doing without the really dark black color all over the place. Uh, see, I'm now painting on some sunken details. Uh, I did a little bit of that curve work by hand, which is rare for me. Uh, I'll more, more usually do stuff like this, where in an effort to try and get the boiler, the, the smoke box cover door, it's actually a quick, quick distraction on the horn. I said, like, how would that look? And it just looked like weird, scary eyes, because uh, that part's doubled. But anyway, uh, stealing the headlight texture off of the Hudson and uh, starting to paint on a few bolts, rotate them, scale them, shape them out, uh, try to make sure they're centered up, and as we're trying to keep going here and just plug away and, yeah, edit the, edit the projection, try to add some, like, interesting side detail, because the real train has some uh, number boards up, up there, but just the way, unfortunately, the way that I packed my texture meant that that wasn't really doable. Now I'm doing a, uh, a part that I always think is fun, which are the builder's plates, which are just kind of really unique sorts of details, I guess, that I don't see a lot of people do. And it's always fun. So this is my first pass at text. I'm like, nah, actually, that's terrible. Let's do my own text. So um, in there, it's way too low res to read in game, and it's backwards on one side. It says, this is not a daylight locomotive, which of course is a lie. Uh, but it also says made by b Squikel, which is nice. You'll never see it in-game, it's way too low res. But every once in a while, if you look super closely at a lot of these builder's plates and things, uh, you'll see my uh, my U logo, you'll see my name, and you'll see, like, J. Or, I don't know, I like to hide a lot of different numbers and uh, things all over the place. So some of the numbers are, like, my birthday. Uh, you, basically, if you're very careful and you are looking through all the stuff that I make, you are going to be able to uh, steal my identity. You're gonna know my social security number. Not really, but uh, you'll know my birthday, I guess. Um, actually, God, I shouldn't say that because I think one of these numbers may actually be my uh, ATM pin. Whoops, just pretend you didn't hear that. Anyway, as I continue with these, uh, these dots, I feel like there were too many, so I alternate and get rid of some, uh, and then try, so these actual inner ones in real life aren't dots, I guess. Well, bolts. They're like little clasps, so I go through and kind of copy the layer and stretch it inwards. Now I'm doing some holes, uh, which are always fun. And there's those are just like black painted circles. And when I do the normal map, they'll get some attention. When I do the specular map, they'll get some attention. Uh, so right now I am uh, deciding how I'm going to attempt the holes in the drive wheels. Uh, and the answer is like roughly, I guess. Uh, but it ends up working pretty well, and uh, the driving wheels at the, in the final texture with the lines around it and everything are some of the parts I'm absolutely like happiest with. But uh, I realize it's really strange. I guess to get these wheels in balance in real life, like the holes had to be cut very, very specifically, but uh, it's just like a weird thing. This is the central part is, um, what is that? I think it's how the wheel connects to the driving rod. And wheel texture is important for me on this, um, and I kind of guessed about this, but it turned out right. It's I wanted a detailed wheel texture because I needed to show with a steam engine, there's a lot of wheels going on. Because uh, you got 10, like 8 wheels per side, so 16 wheels altogether. But um, since the running gear doesn't move in city skylines, at least yet, someday maybe, but I felt like there needed to be enough going on in the wheel area that it would still look like some sort of thing is happening down there. Because I'd, I'd love it if we could have like the, the connecting rods and all the uh, running gear and everything just like going crazy like it does as a train actually drives. But uh, I feel like it was 
this is the best I can do, so whatever. Uh, I'm now doing some parts that you will almost never ever see, which is like a really detailed lower reel before I realize, oh, it's hidden behind like a big frame, oh well. Uh, anyway, I decided to do the white stripes, which is I think an older appearance on this train, so it's got a little bit of uh, mixed details, it's a slightly newer livery version, uh, especially on the tender. It's got the updated number boards and things, but it's got, uh, I think, original style white circles with stars, or who knows, maybe those were added when it was the American Freedom Train in the 70s. But uh, I thought they were cool. I, it's neat, and like looking at other pictures, it's kind of boring when everything's just pitch black on the bottom of a train, and I felt like a little bit of contrast could be nice. So anyway, um, as I continue there, I'm, you can see I'm going back and forth between different textures looking to find details that I can reproduce and find ones that sometimes when I make up details, I'll make up the same detail over and over just for a more consistent look. Uh, and now I'm just kind of painting on raised and sunken details all over places that feel too blank for me. So uh, this was I was thinking about doing like a lattice or something, but decided not to. Uh, and now this is pretty cool. I decided to do some sort of like diamond texture pattern, like a gripping like a shoe gripping texture almost uh, I can try it sideways don't really like it end up doing that so it goes on that little front deck and the side running boards I'm not sure if that's realistic or not it could just be like super slick and it's a smooth metal uh, but I felt like it looked cool anyway that's like some more pipes on the inside here as I continue up I'm lining up different details and now we get to a part that I used to like make fun of people for doing and then realized how much nicer it makes my stuff look uh, rivets. So I go through and texture on individual rivets, which is a little crazy, but uh, it's actually, it takes less time than I previously thought. Um, and just like getting that little extra piece in there for the, like the bump map to do the specular hits to shine off of, it really just adds a lot of detail. And depending on where you do them and how you can like pattern this, it also, in my mind at least, show like helps helps the brain figure out what that that like blank spots are intentionally left blank so it's like yes this this big blank rectangle is not just blank because the creator was lazy but it's blank because it's a big blank piece of sheet metal bolted on in real life uh, so anyway continue doing this we got a lot of rivets down off the cab here uh, and i'm checking back and forth in maya constantly to make sure things look good because uh, i'm while these are well i'm kind of diving headfirst into like one-to-one -one recreations of a lot of things like it's pretty hilarious to see this and the way it's painted and the like type very specific type of locomotive it is and think man it's just generic isn't it uh but if there's a detail that i don't like or a detail that i don't feel like is important to reproduce i just won't bother or i'll make up my own instead so uh, or one that i can't find reference for so i feel like the uh the cab roof rivets here i made up uh, I don't know the real pattern for these, but um, I kind of keep going along with that sort of look and and feel and just trying to make sure that everywhere that looks like it's too blank has some detail. There's actually a couple parts elsewhere on the model that once I brought it in the game, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe that could have gotten a little more attention, but uh, we'll see. I do want to update this pretty soon. Uh, I've been talking with people about getting better sounds and trying to figure out how the, I can write my own sound mod. Uh, number here is X9994, which is, of course, uh, the real thing is X4449, so this is that backwards, uh, and close to my birth date, I guess, which would be in 1995, not 1994, but who knows? Uh, it was basic, basically meant as a reference to the real thing, rather than a reference to any number that means anything to me this time. So now I go and I've, once I did that, I'm like, that's the finishing touch, I'm done. And then realized I hadn't touched the running gear. So I go back through real quick and start masking off. And just, just I just trace it in the brighter texture so it gets a little bit of, uh, of like pop on the edges and makes the edges look more intentional, I suppose. Uh, and now here's actually where I start doing the AO bake, which is pretty cool. So I assign a material, I get that, and I render out, and there you go. So you can see that little texture has all the shadows baked on now which is uh, pretty neat. They're obviously there only for this like rotation of the wheels and things. So uh, I go and I'm looking and there are the wheels are ugly. So I delete all the shadows on the wheels. And once I pull it in, it does definitely add a little bit of kind of realism and pop. Uh, I'm now adding some soot and stains because it, obviously it's a whole damn train, so it's not gonna be perfectly clean. Uh, now I am 
adjusting the texel density of the tender to match the locomotive so that uh, a two pixel wide stripe on the locomotive is the same actual width in game as a two pixel wide stripe on the uh, on the tender, which I feel like adds a little extra kind of professional professional feel and like a cohesive feel. Because that's kind of, right now, I think there are enough assets in City Skylines, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But I feel like a lot of them don't match each other. So whenever I see people that, I don't want to say like, aren't using my trains, but like are doing a, a mixture of stuff, I'm like, that that doesn't look right. Like you're, the glass color on this car is different than the glass color on the car next to it. Um, and I feel like that's an issue, I guess. So I, I spent a lot of time making sure that things like texel densities and colors and uh, speculars and things are as like perfect as I can get them. So anyway, as the tender gets together, you can see I've prepared a car uh, that I actually made earlier. So part of the part of the genesis of this like steam streamliner project was the fact that I have a set of cars now, thanks to uh, somebody who has commissioned me to do some rail cars. Uh, and I'm very excited about finishing some of those up and getting them to him. I'm actually trying to talk to him to deliver something soon, but uh, I'm very busy. And this this was so this is made. I mean, I'm sure you could look at the clock uh, constantly running in the corner there as I do this. Uh, this is pretty much made after work every day. I stayed after work, uh, so I worked from like six to nine thirty or ten uh, for a whole work week. And not all of that is reflected in recording because. Uh, some of it I didn't work like straight through, some of it I was doing other stuff in game, some of it I was doing other things. Uh, but now as I continue, it's time to do the uh, billboard texture, so I grabbed my, uh, I think, I decided a long time ago that I wanted the Southern Pacific to be the Coast Range Railway, uh, or Coast Range Lines, or something like that. But uh, you'll actually see, so I thought like real quick, so I've got a couple like fallen flag railroads coming soon in the revamped freight pack, which were that... Uh, that new freight locomotive texture is coming from, uh, just because I want more more textures, more flavor, more stuff. So uh, Coast Ranger is one of them, and I figured that this would like, as I started thinking, I'm like, yeah, Southern Pacific Coast Ranger, that'll be cool. We'll get some like old patched Coast Range like locomotives and things. And I'm like, oh my god, I know the perfect plan. Uh, so anyway, I'm now going through this actually. So you saw it in the locomotive as well. This kind of using the paint bucket directly on the reference uh, is a new sort of technique for me. I think it worked out pretty well. Um, I'd usually hand paint all of this and try to do it myself, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. It's interesting in real life that would all be black, but I'm just trying to add some like something to look at down there, I suppose, because uh, I don't have any actual depth or texture there. So uh, the bright bright colors and extra dark, darker black, I guess, is um, is kind of the best I could do there. So anyway, um, I I cut this video actually a little bit after I finished the diffuse texture uh, and before I made the normal maps and things because that was boring and I just like wanted to slog through it. So there's actually not much of this time lapse remaining. I'm just kind of making sure that some extra details are in. Uh, so pretty soon we're going to cut the cinematics. So uh, I'm just going to kind of stop talking about this. It's mostly just tweaks, more rivets and things as I finish up the tender here. Uh, but I'm really excited to get this train out there. It's got vehicle effects, so it's got smoke. Uh, right now, at least as I record this, I haven't been able to figure out like I've, the extra work behind releasing my own custom sounds. I know it's possible, and uh, Access Violation, the maker of vehicle effects, has, uh, like is helping me out a little bit. But uh, I don't know the kind of courtesies in releasing a mod or the techniques. So uh, there is going to be an update for this pretty soon, which I'm excited about. So uh, we're going to get uh, some better sounds, some more realistic ones, some big, like, proper American-sounding whistles and, like, train chuffing, I guess. I don't really know a better word for that. But uh, we'll see. So uh, anyway, that's about it for this video. I'm just going to keep, literally keep talking until this cuts. But uh, please, like, if you're interested in this at all, I'd check out this train from the workshop if you're interested in this sort of thing. There is going to be a more modern kind of excursion version. Wow, that was pretty cool. Uh, out too with the auxiliary tender and like a more modern fleet or a more modern set of cars. But uh, this one is available now, or at least it should be, unless I like overslept and forgot to actually release this thing. But uh, that should be about it. So anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know if you want to see more of these asset creation videos in the future. Uh, I'm very interested in them. Oh wow, I actually recorded making the auxiliary tender. Cool, it's right at the end though. 
So it's, yeah, super simple. Just like started editing that stuff. Anyway, uh, that's about it for me. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, let me know if you want to see more of these in the future. They're fun to make. Uh, it's nice to be able to get video stuff out for the mods I do. Uh, and everything I make is a little bit different. So uh, that's about it. Enjoy these last couple cinematics. Check out the mod. And uh, I will see you next time.